Hey everybody, it's Dan once again with another Git tutorial video. Today we're going to talk about Git hooks, uh, which are a pretty cool nifty little feature that Git provides. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Today I'm going to be using my handy dandy Hello World repo. There's not a whole lot going on in here. Um, you don't really have to know the details of what's going on in this project. Uh, the only thing we're really going to be looking at today is the the hooks area that's under the dot git folder so if i just cd into got dot git if you don't remember or haven't seen my other videos dot git is where all the git internals are kept uh so like all the revision history all the magic that happens the stashes everything that happens under the hood um in git is stored under this dot git folder so hooks are no exception so we can cd to the hooks area and you'll see that there's a lot of these .sample files that uh, anytime you create a Git repo, Git is nice and shows you a couple examples um, of what these files look like. So let's just go ahead and open one. This one's called precommit.sample. Let's just take a look. So this is just a uh, shell script. And it says an example hook script to verify what is about to be committed. So this particular hook pre-commit um, gets run right before a commit happens. So here they're doing some, if you read this one, this is an example for how to keep uh, non-ASCII file names. So basically this script will check that you don't have a file name that's not ASCII compliant or that you <laughs> I had a double negative there, but you know what I mean? Basically, this script, when you go to commit, it'll check to see if you have any non-ASCII file names. And if you do, it will reject your commit. And if we scroll down, it'll probably say, yeah, it'll print an error to the screen. So this particular type of uh, git commit hook, the pre-commit, allows you uh, to basically inspect the snapshot of the commit that you're about to make and verify that it's okay in some criteria and that criteria may differ from project to project this one's just an example so there are hooks into a lot of the git mechanisms so this is before the commit this this is uh this prepare commit message is one where you can change the commit message and i'm going to go through an example of these two in a real practical application here in a second um, but there's also ones for different parts of the workflow. So if you want to inspect something before a rebase, if you want to inspect something before a push, um, if you uh, want, I actually, I'm not familiar with apply patch. I'd have to look that up myself, but uh, I think there's even more categories than are listed in samples. And the way that you enable a hook is literally just, just by putting a script that's executable in this directory with the right name. So as an example, we're going to look at this hook in a second. This is one I made. And because it has this name, Git will automatically run it as a pre-commit hook. I don't have to do anything else. I don't have to install it. I don't have to tell it, uh, tell Git in particular. It just goes based on the naming and you can only have one type of script of each category um, per local Git repo. So these Git hooks are really cool. If you're not convinced, you should be or you will be soon. It lets you do all kinds of things um, that are useful to projects. So as an example, a lot of people use issue numbers in their commit messages and projects may want to enforce that. So you can use hooks to enforce that your commit message reference, uh, references a valid issue number. You could even go out and verify that that issue is correct um, using scripting. Uh, you could also, let's say your project has unit tests and you want to require that every commit uh, has unit tests that pass. Well, you can do that with this. Or you can say, not every commit needs to pass, but when I push it uh, to a centralized area, there's something called a post-receive hook. And I notice that one's not even listed here. So post-receive is sort of a centralized approach where it can accept a push, run some testing, and then reject the push if you don't like the outcome. So that's another example. I've seen Git, uh, Git 
hooks that basically enforce coding standards automatically by running uh, beautifier scripts right before you commit it looks at all your code it adjusts it to a certain format style automatically and then tells you it adjusted it lets you look at the changes and then commit again uh, you could also create uh, create a git commit for sort of a safety net and if you have users that aren't familiar with git you're afraid they might commit large binary files forever wrecking your history you can make a script that looks for large binary files and rejects the commit if someone tries to commit those things. So it's really powerful and today I'm going to go through uh, two script examples. I don't have time to go through all of them. Maybe I'll do some more videos if you guys want to on other git commits. So let's go ahead and take a look at the two that I was talking about. So we have a pre-commit hook that is installed and a prepare commit message hook. So let's look at the prepare commit message hook first. So I chose to write this in Python because Python's awesome. If you don't like Python, you will soon. Um, and this script is like three, pretty much three lines. And all this is doing is, so this sys argv1, uh, if you look in the documentation, the prepare commit message is passed an argument by git when it's called the user doesn't pass it git does it automatically and that's just the file path for the commit message so when we do this we open this file path we write a line in here basically what this means is you know when you type git commit it opens a text window well it's going to put this at the top of that text window so we can instruct our users not only do you need a useful message but you should also list the notation refs pound issue number in the first line and so this script doesn't enforce that that has to happen it simply is letting you adjust and prepare if you will the commit message so you don't have to do this in python the sample scripts were done in regular bash any scripting language is fine at the end of the day some of these uh, hooks will determine whether they want to reject the action like the action being the commit based on the return code so if you return non-zero in your script it will usually consider that a failure well it won't usually it will consider that a failure and reject the criteria and i'll show you that in a second so if, if you didn't get that right quick then that's okay um, so let's look at the next one i'm gonna commit here in a sec to show you how they actually operate so this is the pre-commit hook and I just created this a few minutes ago as an example of if you have a workflow that's quick to build, easy to run, and you want to enforce, hey, all commits should meet a minimum testing criteria, then you can enforce that in a pre-commit hook. And this is an example of that. So you don't have to be fluent in Python to understand basically what's going on here is uh, before we commit, this script goes in and it does a make clean, a make, and a run of the program that we build. And the program's called hello. It's just a hello world repo. It just has a tiny binary that doesn't really do much. But then it checks the return values, ensures that they're all zero. And if they aren't, it'll print a message to the screen saying that something went wrong, basically with the build and the run not being stable. And it will exit non-zero, which will cancel the commit. So, if I've done my prep work correctly, which we're about to find out, let's go ahead and try to get commit and see what happens. So remember, we should see it attempt to test everything because in my repo here, if I just do a make, I can do a make clean. And so I'll make again just to build it, but you'll notice that on the make, it creates uh, the hello binary. So let's go ahead and do a commit Hit commit okay check this out so here we see the make clean that we told it to do we see the make and it actually seg faults on the run and then we get the s the error message that we expect refusing to commit unable to clean build and run without error and if you remember that's just exactly what we specified that it should do so in this example, the user is unable to commit because it's broken. Now, 
there might be people screaming out there. You don't want to do that. You want people to commit even if things are broken. I hear you on that. This is just an example if you wanted to do something like this. Whether or not this applies to your project or your developers is a completely different question. But in this example, we might want to know why we seg faulted. So this is probably broken from a previous state, which is great because I get to show off the capability that a non-zero return status here cancels the commit. So let's go ahead and fix it real quick. I'm going to run hello, see what's going on. Segmentation fault on C out foo. I'm guessing that is a null pointer dereference, and it is. So oops, let's go fix that. We're going to quit GDB, open up where it's defined. I was probably doing this as an example. For a different video so now we've made the change that let's go ahead and make <laughs> I introduced a warning that's okay now let's try to run so I fixed it it runs and it returns zero which is the important part um, so that means now if I go to do my commit I should get past the failure that we saw before because the hello binary is now stable. So we made that change. Let's go ahead and add it because we know that was uh, a broken state. And let's try to commit again. Okay. Remember last time it didn't even get this far. It immediately rejected it because the testing failed. Now we get to the commit message and here we see the message that we specified in our prepare commit message um, information. So this is the non this is the custom message that we have decided to put in here. So if I were a good developer, I'd probably do this fixed seg fault, assuming that this is actually an issue in my system, which it's not, but this is just an example. I write the commit, I quit, and I have now successfully created a brand new commit and this process exercised two git hooks it exercised the pre-commit git hook and it exercised the prepare commit message git hook so this is just an example showing two potential applications of those two things so you might be asking the logical step of well hey you just made a commit message and uh, you referenced issue 100 but how do you know that issue exists well I will leave it as an exercise to the user you are correct we didn't actually enforce it in any of these get hooks that that issue must exist or even that the message here contains it right we, we put a message saying hey you need to put this as your first line but nowhere did we check that that criteria was met that can actually be done in what's called a commit message hook so I don't know if there's an example in here there is so if uh, if you'd like some homework since I know that's you know people on YouTube really love homework um, you can check out the commit message sample hook this is the the hook where you would do that checking that I'm talking about so if you wanted to enforce hey my commit message needs to have certain criteria in it um, the commit message hook is where you would do that okay so I'm about to wrap up here Keep this video short just a couple examples I do want to say one more thing real quick about hooks, um, where they live, and what that means. So you'll notice that the hooks are under .git slash hooks. And if you're Git savvy, you may wonder the question, well, are these hooks committed in the repo? How are they shared from developer to developer? And that's a really good question. And the answer is no. These Anything that's under the .git folder is local to that repository, at least in the hook sense. Um, meaning this is just a directory that's untracked. You can throw anything in there. Someone get clones from my hello world repo. They will not get this file. And they will not get, uh, where is it, this guy. 
So you might be asking the next question, well, how do you share these things? And there's a number of ways to do it, but what most people do is they have a first time setup script, meaning, you know, when you get clone hello from whatever the origin is for a new developer, the first thing they do is run something like setup hooks. Now this doesn't exist in my repo, but basically what it would do is it would install the hooks in the dot git slash hooks area. And typically the way it's done is I would take the content of this script and I would actually track it in a different folder, maybe in the bin folder of my directory. And then this script would basically copy it from my tracked bin area into my dot git slash hooks area, if that makes sense. So, um, so yeah, just, just be aware of that, that if you create a git hook, not everyone else gets it. And depending on what type of hook it is, you may need to have uh, scripts or sort of a one-time setup for the installation of hooks. Okay, that's enough of that. So the end of the video is usually where I show you all the git commands you learned today. And uh, today that's none. So I will instead post a link to a great resource. You don't have to memorize this. Maybe I'll remember to put it in the video description. But even if you don't, just Google uh, Git hooks, and this is like the first link. Uh, let me see if I can bring it up here. So this page ha is a great resource for describing how Git hooks work, um, the various Git hooks that exist, and the samples, um, the scripting link. You can use any scripting language you want. Um, so I would go ahead and take a look at this page. Uh, you'll learn way more from it than you will from me. Um, so anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, my name is Dan, and I will see you next time.